that God has a fixed time. When he's, when he's ready, he's going to drop the hammer. And that's all there is to it. You might as well get set for it. And in our Father's Word, there's more than one time that he warns us that's going to be the fact. So, as always, let's pick up a documentation from the Old Testament as um, to what truly is happening. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Psalm 75. Psalm 75, a psalm of Asaph. Asaph means a collector of the people. Uh, in the title of the psalm, it's written to the chief musician, Altaschet, which is to say, uh, don't destroy, do not destroy. And it has to do with, uh, or destroy not, it has to do with God's judgment. And it's a psalm pleading with him not to totally destroy when judgment day comes. And of course, anybody that knows our Father knows that's not going to happen. Why? Our Father is always fair and he's and uh, uh, merciful, but also he's a judge. And what he says, that's the way it is. So Psalm 75, let's pick it up and see what it says. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For, for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. And, and they do. God's works are wonderful. He gives everybody an opportunity. What you do with it, that's your business. What you do with it, that's what you live with. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. That's what our Father says. Okay, now you see, unfortunately, from the manuscripts, you lose quite a lot. I want you to make a note. I don't want you to forget it. The word congregation, as it is utilized here, is the Hebrew word noed. Noed. And it means a fixed time. The congregation, when they gather for judgment at a fixed time, that's what God is talking about here. And he wants you to know that it is a fixed time, that he's not playing games. And he's saying, when that time comes, and when it is the fixed time that I call the congregation together to judge them, I'm going to do it right. And you can count on it. He will. You might say, you're going to get everything you got coming to you all at one time. Okay? That wouldn't frighten you Christians, would it? No, because you've got rewards on Judgment Day. A lot of people, though, that don't, they're going to get everything they got coming to them all at one time. Why? Because God said, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to judge it as it should be. But, beloved, take that word congregation. Check it out in your own Strong's Concordance so you see with your own eyes. And you know that really what the word means, a meeting place held at a fixed time to judge both the good and the bad. All right? That's important because it's talking about the vials of God. And that's what we're going to be talking about this evening. Verse 3, the earth... And all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it, Sila. In other words, I'm the one that keeps it going. I created it. Why wouldn't he be? And I bear it up. I will judge it fairly. And of course, Sila in the, in the uh, Psalms means stop the music. Think for a moment. I'm going to connect two things together. And what he connects here is the set time of judgment. That's important to you. The set time of judgment, both for the wicked and for the righteous. It's all at the same time. And our Father is that judge. That's the congregation he's talking about gathering. It is a congregation that shall be judged at a fixed time and we're coming up on that time that's why I'm stressing it in this Passover that you have it sealed in your mind that you can break down both the seals and the trumps and the vials to chronologically know in your mind the fixed times 
whereby when you the seal that uh, lets you foreknow when it triggers, then you're with the plan of the day. No problem. Verse 4, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift not up uh, the horn. The horn signifies power. In other words, don't talk against the God that created you. That's basically what he's saying. Does that make sense to you? Why would somebody want to talk about the God that's going to judge everyone? That doesn't leave you in very good standing. So you want to be careful how you mention his name. Because, hey, he keeps... You know, man kind of forgets. God doesn't. He's got a book. And it's called the Book of Life. And if you're in it, you're very lucky that you're in his book, especially in the good column. Otherwise, you're there, and all your evil deeds are written right by it. That's why everybody gets everything they got coming in one day. Some people, it's reward. <clears throat> Some people, it's not. Um, verse 5, lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. What he's talking about is speak not arrogantly with about the rock. That's to say the foundation. That's to say God. It's not wise. And, hey, there's a day coming that he's going to even the score. Is he sensitive? Well, in a sense, he is. <clears throat> Do you blame him? He gave his only son that whoever, whosoever believed upon him could have eternal life. He, he is forgiving over and over and over again. He forgives, forgives, forgives. And then when you've got somebody that is so stiff-necked and so foolish, so arrogant, that they continue call, call, taking his name in vain or calling him names or not believing him, uh, you would, you're not expecting a medal if you do that, are you? You're not expecting a reward, I would hope, because I can tell you what you're going to get. And it's, sure not, it's going to be a reward, all right. But um, if you're one of these that likes to go to a pity party, you, you'll have a right to then, because pity you. <laughs> okay. In other words, God's, God is righteous. He uses common sense. And common sense lets you know when he says, I'm going to judge both the good and the bad. And they're going to get what they got coming to them. And I have a fixed time for it. St I'm stressing that, beloved. It's important. Verse 6, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. And you know what that means. How is it written in Isaiah chapter 14 that God always rules from the side of the north on, and from the temple? That's the way it is, and that's why he does it. And that's where the correction is coming from, is from God, directly from God. And they're going to get it. Verse 7, but God is the judge. Do you know something? That's why you don't have anything to worry about. Why? Your father is the judge. And, you know, you can take that and say, if my father is the judge and I've loved him and treated him right, I don't have anything to worry about. Bingo. That's right. You don't. You have everything to be joyous over. But if you've been wicked to your father, hey, you get all at one time what you got coming to you. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. He, meaning he's fair. And hey, listen, as long as you get a fair shake, you got no complaint. Okay. You are, are the captain of your ship. You drive your ship, and there may be people give you advice if you take it. Hey, that's, that's still you that did it. You have to hold responsible for your deeds. So when he judges you, it's by what you have done, and it's going to be done at that fixed time. Verse 8, for in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. This is why we came here. In his hand there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is, a, it is full of mixture. 
and he poureth out of the same, but the dregs thereof are all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Like it or lump it, they're going to drink from the cup of God. You know what it's really filled with? Not, not wine. God's wrath. Now, if, if you get down to the dregs, that's your part. You got trouble, friend. Because God is coming back and he is not happy with some. He is not even a little bit happy with some. I would hate to be in their boots. Because, uh, verse 9, But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked, that's their power, also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. So if you are righteous, if you're planting seeds, if you're doing your father's work, he said, I'm going to enlarge your own. That means your power, your ability, your blessings, that that you have to work with. The more you do for God's work, utilizing common sense in the place he has placed you, it may just be planting a seed once a week, once a month. Or when God makes it known it's time to. Always protect your credibility. But work for God. When that opportunity prevails, plant that seed and he will expand it. He will let it grow. It will increase and increase. And uh, why? It's his promise. I will exalt those that do my work. Those that are pleasing to me. And it is not difficult to please our Father. The word, as we covered earlier here, where he said, don't be foolish. It's kind of like arrogant. Don't be arrogant toward God. You know, if you, you, you'd be a lot better off being arrogant to your mate than you would to God. Because your mate, well, maybe, uh, you know, after they get over it, might cook you a biscuit, you know. <laughs> but when God pours out that cup, there's not going to be any biscuits in it. Okay. Don't be arrogant. If you're going to be arrogant with anybody, don't let it be God. Okay. He's coming back and he's not happy with some. Make sure. Make real sure. That you're one of the ones that he is happy with. So I, I wanted to cover the Old Testament. And I wanted to show you the witness for God's judgment in the cup. I wanted to show you, even from the Old Testament, in the word congregation, it means a fixed time for a specific meeting, meaning judgment. Check it out for yourself. That God does not waver. He is true to his word. He keeps his word. You know, when you know his plan of the day, you can't really go too far wrong. It's real easy to please him. You know, even if you fail in trying to please him, he counts it as done. When you make that effort, when you try, he knows it. Why? He utilizes common sense. And there's sure a lot in politics Religion and other places in this world today that common sense is not utilized. It seems to have taken a vacation. So don't let that happen to you and do not be a part of it. Okay, let's go to Revelation chapter 15. <clears throat> Having sealed that from we're going to go to the vials to God's cup. In, and when we go to this 15th chapter, we have just passed the 14th naturally. Isn't that brilliant? No, really. But the 14th talks about their vine, put in that sickle and reap. Their vine is not our vine. It goes straight to the Song of Moses, which tells you what the wicked will be doing. Okay, chapter 15, verse 1. Let's pick it up there. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, 
for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Guess when these are given? Do you know what the chronological order is? I gave you the fixed time this morning. It was the sixth trump. That was the second woe. Okay? That's when the four winds stopped. That's when the the that's when God began to intercede. Up until then, he had told Michael to do a few things, kick old Satan right on out of here, put him down on earth. But when you come to that second woe, God himself begins to intercede in the sixth and the seventh trump. All seven of these vials, all seven of these cups will be poured out during the seventh trump. Basically the sixth and seventh trump, mainly the seventh. Do you understand that's right at the end? Don't be fooled, beloved. We're coming up into some pretty tough times. Let's document that from his word. Verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on a sea of glass, having the harps of God. How much went to pass in that verse? Those that had gotten the victory over the beast and over the image. How many trumps did you blow off there? Now, I'm only doing this to show you where we're at, okay? You're in the seventh trump here. Basically, in the seventh trump. And the vials have not even began being poured out. Let me rephrase that to be... Um, my opinion is in the sixth, which is the second woe, in the seventh trump, the third. But here, I mean, you've already got these people that have been deceived. And the trumps haven't started. I'm sorry, the vials have not started beginning. Verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous. Are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true, are thy ways, thou King of saints. Or or King of the ages is a better translation. Why? He's forever. He's eternal. And you are too if you're with him. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. His judgments are going to happen. Why? There's a fixed time. Manifest means it's there. It happens. You better start counting the trumps, dear one. We're closing in. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the, of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts, Zoom, uh, gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, V-I-A-L-S, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. In other words, they weren't even poured out. Until the sixth and the seventh trump. Okay? What does that mean? God holds his cool up until then. But then he's tired of letting man handle it. And he's going to take care of business himself. Verse 8. Here's another timeline. Don't miss it. Verse 8. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man... Won't do you any good to plant any more seals. No man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Now, this sealing, let, let's talk about let's talk about the seals for a moment, but first, you know, the word vile was that a little flask. You may as well sing the little song. I'm a little teapot, strong and stout, 
here is my handle and there is my spout. We're going to take this little flask and we're going to run over here and we're going to put a few drops on some. Hey, you don't know what the word vile is in the Greek. Okay. It's fiola. Fiola. And, and you know what it is? It's a description of a cup. Number one, it's shallow. And it's broad. And it's a cup. Now, why would God use a cup to pour out his wrath that is shallow, broad, I meaning it's got a big mouth, not some little teapot. Okay. And it's shallow. You can, I mean, dump the whole thing all in one shot. Okay. It means He means business. So we're not talking about sprinkling. So let, let, the seals. Please don't ever forget this. The seals are simply to have the truth in your mind. How do you acquire the seals? There's only one way you can. That's from the Lamb of God. And you get it from Him now. When the Holy Spirit and the Lamb speaks. Documentation for that, uh, Revelation 6, 1. Only the Lamb of God. Not a bunch of angels. Why? Because God is the Word of God, and it is the Word of God that you must have in your mind that places the seal there where you overcome. Now, trumpets. A trumpet, when you have an army, sounds, it gives messages. It's charge, retreat, wake up, go to sleep. Okay? Trumpet executes an order. But a seal is when the stuff hits the fan. Okay. It's when the stuff hits the earth at the hand of God. I mean, he's tired of messing around at this time. That's why you can count on the, the uh, vials being dumped. Not until the sixth, but primarily the seventh trump. That's when it's going to happen. Okay. Again, seals, simply knowledge in your mind, placed there where you cannot be deceived. Trumps is when God gives the order and he gives it from heaven. Like, when does he tell Michael to kick uh, Satan out of heaven? He gives that order in heaven, not earth. Well, why, why would he do that? Because that's where they are. He has not interfered with earth yet. Man kind of has a way of messing it up himself. But when the vials begin, shallow, broad cup. I mean, it empties fast. It's flat. And that's when God's word is no more, no warning. That's when the action transpires. The trump, the warning's already sounded. I'm going to do it. But when you wait for the vial, it's too late. It's over. That's when God himself intercedes. So, uh, we see then the difference in why God would say, at that fixed time, I have a plan. And it's going to transpire in that way. Now turn with me to chapter 16, verse 1. You know, this is, um, this is something when you chronologically put it in order, falls in place by itself. Listen to these words. Verse 1 of chapter 16, the great book of Revelation. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Where is this going? Not heaven. Earth. And what is it? It's God's wrath. And God means business. Verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. And upon them which had worshipped his image. That's the first vial, my friends. The first vial. When, when did they have an opportunity to worship the image of the beast? 
why am I saying it? I want you to see how far along in the Trumps we are here. Okay? It's over, practically. When the vials begin, the people have already messed up. They've already worshipped the Antichrist. And it's time for a little correction. That shallow, broad-mouthed, cut, full of God's wrath is going to be dumped out, not on those he loves. They're immune. You could be standing right beside someone that needed correction, and you would be loved. Whereas the other would feel the wrath of God. I mean directly from a shallow, broad cup boiling with God's wrath. Hey, he's not going to put up with it forever. You understand? That doesn't make even common sense, does it? That he would just take it over and over and over. Of course not. Then do, do, are we going to call him a liar that he's made these promises? There's a day of correction coming without a fixed time? No, there's a fixed time. And that, that time is coming. So this is simply, and perhaps I'm, I don't want this to sound like I'm talking down to you. I'm not. I'm pleading with you to see how the proof is in the pudding, it's in the word, okay? Where, where the first vial is poured out, people have already worshipped the image of the beast from Mar um, Revelation 13, okay? Uh, verse uh, 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a, of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Do you understand this is the same thing the two witnesses do in Revelation 11, 6? A little warning will come from the witnesses. But this is not just a warning. Water. Turn, turn, don't turn, but you should even have be on that page now. Chapter 17, verse 15 of Revelation. What, what are all these rivers and waters and seas and lakes? Verse 15, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horror sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. That is who the sea is. The sea of people that are whoring after the Antichrist are going to have the cup emptied on them. They're going to have the uh, joy of partaking of the dregs of the wrath of God. That's why you don't want any part of it. You don't, you don't have to be frightened away from that, but your love of your Father draws you far away from anything that could penetrate you or your family in that regard. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Let's just say people. The very people themselves. And you know something... I could even say there are some of them will be sweating blood at this time. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. You always judge fair. You know how to get those that are wicked. You know how to pour the, the vial upon those that deserve it. And you know how to bless your children. Remember what he said back in the 75th Psalms? I will give the dregs to the wicked, but I will strengthen the horn of the righteous. That's why that you can rest assured when your blessings come, that it's because you're doing something right. You're following the righteousness of the living God. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. For they are worthy. They deserve it. They're going to get it. And this, you can't help having your mind go back to the 23rd of chapter of Matthew where the Kenites sit in the seat of Moses and have been guilty from the blood of many prophets. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And you know that from... Chapter 11, verse 5. The two witnesses give a small taste of this way back then. Letting people know 
You know, we are living in some very precarious times, but precious times. Many of the prophets wanted to live today when these events are transpiring, when when they are consummating. Again, seals all at one time, trumps almost through, and then we have this, where the stuff hits the fan, God's will. There will be no uh, bargaining with him at that time. Verse 9, And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over the, these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Talk about deception. Boy, when Satan does it, he does the job right. Okay. The world is deceived in, in, in a large part. If your name is in the book, you're very fortunate. You care. And you don't mind reading for yourself. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. That is to say, the very seat of Antichrist. And you that are familiar with Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, know where Satan plants his seat through this particular time. It's on Mount Zion itself, claiming to be God, sitting there claiming to be Christ. And it's obvious from the vials that many will believe him. Verse 11, And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores and repented not of their deeds. You're not going to change Satan's lieutenants or those that are so deceived that they really truly believe they are following Christ. They truly do. Uh, Churches have been formed on some lies. And uh, I don't want someone to think that I'm down on churches. I'm not. I love churches. Where would be we be without them? Pray God. You know, bad enough the way it is. Here comes the sixth, which must align with the sixth trump. Listen to it. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the waters thereof were dry, was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And you know who the kings of the east are? That's the Oriental, the Middle East, and so forth. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Where? Dragon. Satan. And out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, the triune godhead of Satan. Bunch of lies. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth. Not the kings of heaven. Not the kings that Satan boots out. But the actual world rulers, earth rulers, are taken in by it. And the whole world together them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. It's coming, friend. It's called Armageddon, remember? Verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. How embarrassing it would be to claim to be a Christian and end up in the sack with Satan. Boy, how embarrassing. This is why Jesus would say, Woe to those that are with child when I return. He was speaking spiritually. And it meant those that are spiritually impregnated with these lies. Verse 16, And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Ar means hill or city. Gadon means the gathering place of the crowd. Gedeo. And the seventh poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And so it is. It is done what? God's wrath is poured out. There's going to be a lot of pain, a lot of suffering because of that. Don't worry, the war goes on just a little bit further. We're going to stop there for this time. But I want to, uh, again, it's going to sound like I'm talking down to you, but you must be able to simplify this and keep it in your mind whereby you can understand 
the seven seals, the seven trumps, and the seven vials. You have heard me say that when 666 comes together, six seal, six trump, and six vial, that, that's, that's, six, six, that's Satan. That's when the Euphrates is dried up. That's when the wicked spirits are turned loose. On earth, not heaven, not in the air, but on earth. That's when Satan rules and reigns as the false messiah. And boy, is he going to make hay, it would seem like. Do you understand that's what angers our father? That's why our father pours the shallow, broad cup. You know, do you understand how, you know, if you've got a real shallow cup and, and it's real broad and you fill it all the way full, how careful do you have to be carrying that thing? You know, I mean, it's, it, it, it'll empty out quick. And that's what God wants you to draw from it. He's not happy. He's angry. And he wants to pour that out. So... You do have the three sixes coming together. And it means doom right on the seat of Satan and his false teachings. So you have the seals as your protection. It is your knowledge from the word of God. Hearing the word of God. Remember we covered in Ezekiel this morning. Prophesy to those dry bones. Prophesy to those spiritually dead people. And what do you begin to see? This person begins to hear. That person begins to hear. Another person begins to hear. And they come together as an army of God. Because they receive the seals, which are the word of God. His truth. And then we have the trumps. That's time for action. Give the command to go forth. That takes time. And then you, when, when you work your way down to the sixth trump, as it is written in Revelation chapter 9, then the river Euphrates again is hit and the devils are turned loose on earth. And that's when God's wrath begins to dump. Dump and dump. There is no warning for that. I mean, the first thing you will see is not a command to go forth, but you will see God's people being blessed and Satan's people being burned. I don't mean literally, but I mean in anything they attempt to do, it's going to go sour for them because God is unhappy with them. So chronologically, keep it in your mind straight that the seals happen before the first trump sounds. Why? Because our people have to know what to expect, the truth. And then the trumps begin to sound. And they've begun. But when you get to the sixth trump, then the vials are loaded. And you're getting real close then. And those vials empty out quick and complete and thorough. Because God will judge. That's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. His children have been abused by Satan for, for eons. And he's fed up with it. He's not going to take it anymore. And how proud he is of his loved ones when they help him make that sin. So again, it is so ever important. Do you all know I didn't bring a watch this time? I have no idea how long I've been teaching. You know, usually we try to keep this where it fits an hour's television. See? But, uh, but anyway, that, you know, my, one of my mentors told me one time, said, when you, know how to, when you know when it's time to quit is when you get through. <laughs> He said, that's when you sit down. When you run out of something to say, then shut up. So this is the point I wanted to make this weekend, beloved. It's so important. I insist that you not take my word 
for the word congregation and its definition and translation in Psalms 75. I want you to know that God has a fixed time, that he loves his children. He means what he says, and he says what he means. It's not difficult to understand and follow him. So many people say, I have to have an interpreter for that. If God is speaking in a parable, yes, you need to interpret it. If God is not speaking in a parable, then you're silly if you think you need an interpreter. Like this morning, Christ said in uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 18 and 19, I beheld Satan fall from heaven. You know, uh, duh. <laughs> that needs an explanation. I don't think so. Do you think God, do you think Christ doesn't know what he's saying? You know? But maybe it means that a tub of lard's going to hit Long Beach. <laughs> yeah? You can really get into some silly, silly things. <laughs> God knows what he says, means what he says, and it's going to happen the way he says it. He has a fixed plan. Well, don't forget. Chronologically, keep those things in order when you study the book of Revelation. I suppose I am accused of oversimplifying at times, but to me, I do not take it as being... An oversimplification, okay? I don't. I can't see it. Why? Why? Because it's simple. It's just very simple to keep it straight. Do you know what? If you don't, it's so simple keeping it straight. If you don't keep it straight, you're going to mess your little old mind up. Okay? Get all confused. So let it be simple. And let the truth flow. And be blessed of Almighty God. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. Norma from Kentucky, I have a question about the spirit named Legion, which went into the pigs. When the pigs drowned themselves, did the spirit drown also? Do spirits die? No, not in that way. Spirits die, but only in one manner. That's when God destroys them. Man cannot destroy a spirit. We have... Uh, why did Christ allow the evil spirits to enter the pigs, the lowest of carnal flesh? It was to show you that not even pigs will put up with evil spirits. They're smarter than a lot of people, and some people can't help it. I'm not. I mean, if they if they have been uh, uh, taken over, they have been. Okay, but the reason Christ did it was because he gave us power over all of our enemies and over all evil spirits that in the name of Jesus Christ we can send them back where they came from which is with the Father and he can destroy them. That's why evil spirits are very afraid of children of God because they can bring about their demise and they have a right to be afraid of those that love God and that know in the name of Jesus to send them back where they came from. Joyce from New York. What number is spiritual completeness? Seven, okay? Seven is, uh, in biblical numerics, is completeness, spiritual completeness. Okay, Robert from North Carolina. 
What is the difference between the 7,000 and the 144,000? Well, the 7,000 are God's elect, or his very elect, you might call them. They are the priests that are mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 44 during the millennium that are allowed to approach Christ. The 144,000 which went astray when Israel did for a moment and later as it is written when the false Messiah comes, as it is written in Revelation chapter 14, they are still virgins as far as falling for Satan because the 7,000 that are delivered up before the false Messiah, when Christ speaks through them the Holy Spirit, then these that you have planted seeds in will say, Whoa! That person said this would happen. And then they come out. And they remain virgins rather than wedding, spiritually speaking, the spurious Messiah. But you will find them also mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 44. They are the priests that can only be reached by the very elect. That is to say, the priest of the Zadok, which is simply a Hebrew word that means the upright or the just. Those that are not going to be deceived by Satan's, the spurious Messiah. Okay? And if some of you don't understand that, put it on the shelf. It'll wear in. Okay? And read Ezekiel 44, which is, you're already in the millennium. Ray from Canada. Why will water not exist in the eternity? Well, oh, water will exist. The, the firmament returns to whence it came. Well, where was the firmament? The firmament was was um, protecting us from the dangerous zones of sun and everything else to where it was never night or day. But this earth didn't need water because it was surrounded in it, in a sense. Watered by the night. And there was no jet streams or anything of that nature. That's why that you can go to the North Pole and and find mammoths with buttercups in their mouth where they were instantly frozen. Well, how, how did buttercups grow at the North Pole? Well, they under the tundra, I should say. Uh, that, because they did. Because, but, but the water simply is put back to its original place before the captable, that is to say, came crashing down and destroyed things. Laverne from Georgia. Is it a sin for parents to celebrate their children's birthdays? Of course not. Of course not. One, you know, uh, th that's a gift from God. And, um, and uh, the, the, what, what would be wrong in celebrating a child's birthday? I, I cannot imagine. Something, somebody's, I guarantee you, when I get a question like this, it means that some preacher has gone on a tangent. Okay, most likely. <clears throat> but um, uh, let me ask you a question. What possible law would a couple break if they were pleased and celebrated the birth of their child? Where, where could there possibly be a sin connected with that? The answer, we covered... Ten majors today. Was there any place that you could find that? Does that, does that coveting anything your neighbor might have, even his children? I don't think so. No, of course it wouldn't be a sin. So, uh, so be it. Uh, Quina from North Carolina. Quina, Quina, Quina. I think. Uh, I hope that's correct. From North Carolina. What does First Timothy three two mean? A bishop, which is a teacher, must be sincere, and which means he must know what he's talking about. Okay, he must know and understand the word. He must be of one wife. That means um, he at, at a time. There are legal reasons that if a wife did him wrong and he divorced her according to the law of God, now. And remarried, 
he would still be a man of only one wife. That's law. You, you get a bunch of people that say, well, you can never have a bishop that's a divorcee because he's a man with more than one wife. No, he isn't. He only has one. Uh, 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 people uh, uh, have seen, they seem to have lost the art of understanding what they read. Okay. Or in reasoning law. This is why you will never hear me teach too much law to people because people readily grab a case and say, that's me, when it takes two parties to tango and the law applies to both of those and you must know the full story before the law can make a judgment okay, or before you can ap apply the law there, there, there's you know and you'll um, you will have one party that will come in and say oh well I, I don't think I want to go there but they might <laughs> in their mind think that their mate did something the mate didn't Okay, so you got to know both sides of the whole thing, and, and then make your judgment. And but anyway, that's that's what a bishop is. All right, is somebody that is sincere in what they do, and primarily what it really melts down to is the word of God comes before anything else. Okay, <clears throat> Alamo from Alma, Alma from Virginia. Please explain First Timothy two twelve. All through the Bible, it talks about women judges and teachers, so this confuses me. It confuses a lot of people. And it says that a woman should be silent and learn in church. And what woman are we talking about basically, basically and overall? The bride of Christ. That's what church is for, is to prepare a bride for Christ. And it applies to all people. Um, if some yo-yo male comes into my church while I'm teaching God's Word or while anyone else is and starts ratchet join in the back of the church, I'm going to throw him out. Okay. It means don't chatter in church. Come there to learn and listen. And if some chatterer comes along, and if the bride of Christ is not fitting to be the bride of Christ, throw them out, okay? Uh, until they're ready to want to learn. That's basically what it means. That really upsets some people when I teach that. Boy, does it. It says Eve's one at sin. Well, she sure did. But old Adam partook of the same fruit she did. And... uh uh, it uh, you have to have the whole story before you can start judging people. Okay, Chris from Tennessee. Uh, I am 12 years old and I go to church every time it's open. But I've got a question in Revelation chapter 12 verses 3 and 4. Will you explain that to me? Well, um, Chris, I'm beginning to. Yeah, Chris, I'm sure that's what that is. You write real good. Uh, I'll be happy to. It has to do with the first earth age. And it was Satan's power structure, his government, in that first earth age before he fell. And, and even in the first earth age, it shows how that he deceived and drew a third of God's children to him and away from God. And, and it made God very unhappy. Because what he wants from his children then and now and in the third earth age coming will be their love. That's all. And you know something? He has a right to expect their love just as he has your love, Chris, because you go to church. You like to study God's word. That's what church is about. Okay, Dina from Tennessee. What is a Moffat Bible and the Apocrypha? I am studying my Bible a lot. Do I need to know about this? Well, you know, uh, it's, it is your choice. Dr. Moffat was a, a, a great scholar. If you, it's according to how, what depth you wish to go into God's Word. Down through the years, there are many places that scriptures have not been lost, but have been 
uh, a copyist has placed in a place where they don't belong. And Dr. Moffat, if he had a gift from God, it was in straightening out Scripture, whereby it best applies. And uh, Dr. Moffat was a scholar, and he did his work, if I remember right, in the 30s. And he apologizes in his original publication for not using the word Yahweh, the sacred name. But he said, I, I am so persecuted for writing a work that some people think is I'm trying to take away the King James, that it brings too much heat on me. So that's not, that's not verbatim, but that's pretty close. So it's a good work. I, I think it's a good work. Uh, I certainly have one in my library, and uh, it, it's not necessary as a study Bible. I teach the King James as it is written, and occasionally, occasionally, I will correct Scripture if I feel it is really harmful in the copyist era. So, era. So, uh, be that as it may. All right. The Apocrypha is simply uh, twelve uh, some some books that were left not canonized, and it, it's good to have a working knowledge of them sec for only secondary. All right. And I'll stop there because why? I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all a lot because you enjoy studying our Father's Word that uh, it's important to you. And you know what? It causes him to love you. It really does. It makes his day. You know, that, again, that's what he wants is your love. You, don't, you just can't imagine what that means to him. So let him know, won't you? Just take time to let him know, Father, I love you. All right? and that, he, he will bless you. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Bless God, he will always bless you. Most important, you stay in his word every day in his word. It's a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because Jesus, Yahshua, he is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.